there are lots of chances at this stage, but nothing is guaranteed. As you said, the process of voting the president is a bit like a Russian roulette. It's, you never know what is going to happen and when. So effectively, um, Draghi can make it, but he probably needs to reach an agreement with the various parties in his coalitions to make sure that then there's also some form of accord for the new government that comes after him when he moves from Palazzo Chigi to here in Quirinale. So do you think that ultimately it's just too complex, too complicated to move Mario Draghi at this moment in time? No, no, it's still doable. It's actually, in my opinion, preferable. Uh, the only question is who becomes prime minister after that. Clearly, a simple solution would be replicating the current government with just a new prime minister. It could be also of technocratic nature, being Franco, the, the current treasury minister, or Cartabia, the justice minister, for example, but there could be others, of course. But it's quite unlikely the parties will accept that solution. It's not good to be commissioned, so to speak, by two technocratic figures, both the Quirinale and Palazzo Chigi, just one year before the election. They probably want to have a say on who's going to be ministers and uh, who's gonna, and what policies will be adopted during this year of the electoral campaign. Now, even if uh, Mario Draghi does not move to become the next president of Italy, there's a school of thought that, uh, well, he might not have the necessary support to implement uh, the reforms needed between now and the parliamentary elections in 2023. Do you think that that's actually the most likely scenario, that he will struggle in the coming months to actually put forward those necessary laws? Let's assume that a good, uh, say, president is elected, I mean, somebody very well presentable, respected in Europe and so on and so forth, and Mario Draghi remains at Palazzo Chigi. So the question is, will, be, will he be able to implement the reforms needed to receive the funds of the recovery plan? And the, the answer is, he can, but of course, the difficult part starts now. He had one year of grace period, if you want, when parties effectively agreed on everything. But now they enter in the electoral campaign. They want to be well positioned ahead of the February elections next year. They want to mark their points. They want to put the flags on the ground. So effectively, they might be cross vetoes and say, you cannot do this. And if you cannot do this, then you cannot do that. In that occasion, then it becomes hard for a president without his own political party in parliament to support these policies to actually get these things through parliament. So it, the difficulties will start now if Draghi remains at Palazzo Chigi. Then what's the likelihood that uh, Italy will actually receive those European funds given this political fragmentation? Uh, the funds are tied to the reforms. If the reforms are implemented, the funds will definitely arrive. Uh, the question is how content Europe will be for a half implementation of those measures. Italy is very good in promoting reforms. They have tons of reforms. The problem is implementing them. And on the use of European funds or, or public funds in general, Italy has a uh, kind of mixed track record. In 94 G8, Napoli was transformed with public funds. The Expo in Milan was transformative for, for the city. But then the use of regional funds from Europe over, uh, and, uh, and uh, structural funds from Europe over the last few years has been very, very problematic. Only 20% perhaps is spent, not a very good track record. So Italy needs to show that when it receives funds from Europe, it can really spend it well.